I thought maybe we can do a little bit of a deep dive into these parameters and describe uh, and like uh, investigate what are these. So we have mass, damping, stiffness, velocity, overshoot clamping, rest speed threshold and rest displacement threshold. These are the parameters that you can set in animated and reanimated. And um, yeah, I guess let's just start with like the physics stuff. Um, so do you know what is mass and stiffness? So these physics-based based animations are based on uh, Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. And as a rule of thumb, I guess in the, you know, in the spring animations or other physics-based uh, user interactions, we usually take uh, mass equals one, and that gives us uh, force equals acceleration. And it's just because we're not really trying to build a physical system. We just want things to look like uh, some physical effect. So usually mass is going to be one in 99.9% of cases. Wow, I, I don't put mass as one, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Maybe I should, <laughs> but maybe this makes it confusing for me. <laughs> but mass is the parameter which is going to be used in... Uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, force equals mass times acceleration. And it's just nice to use one. It's going to simplify things. I guess maybe this is why I am struggling so much. So I've, I've uh, researched, it, researched it a bit yesterday. And um, I think it's best exp uh, explained if you, like, imagine a real spring. And uh, the, the mass is, like, literally, like, you could imagine it as a weight that you put underneath the spring. So you can imagine that if you increase the mass, then the spring is gonna spring more down, right? And uh, the, the stiffness is um, just uh, how easy the spring is uh, to contract or uh, extend. So if, uh, if, if you like put like, use a different material or like use a thicker wire, um, the spring can be less stiff and more resistant to a change. The lower the stiffness, the more bouncier the spring animation is. So if you put a really low stiffness, it's going to go like really crazy, overshoot, bounce back, maybe multiple times. Um, velocity is actually one of the other parameters um, that you can put on there. Um, I think velocity definitely also like is a important parameter. I think like stiffness defines, um, yeah, stiffness like defines how how much velocity you're gonna get if you're gonna like pull with a certain force um, on a spring, as far as I understand. I mean, this uh, spring animation, for instance, calculates position. Velocity is a change of position across time and acceleration is a change of velocity across time. And we start with Newton second law, uh, force equals mass times acceleration, and then you can go from there to calculate the position at every, um, for every frame. And you have the delta of time since the last time you calculated the position, and you can calculate the position uh, like this. Very interesting. So this also already explains a bit uh, the next parameter that you can put in velocity. According to like the React Native animation, it says this parameter is like the initial velocity that you're going to put in. So of course, like the spring is going to behave a bit uh, different, whether like uh, you are just like dragging on the spring and then releasing it, or if you like um, already have some uh, force on it and uh, uh, like reaching out and like throwing spring back or something. So this is uh, what the velocity parameter does. And uh, then there's damping, which I uh, think is also like really interesting and a very powerful parameter that's going to affect a lot. So if you just put, if you just define a stiffness and mass, the spring animation is actually going to go infinite. It's never going to uh, stop springing. That makes sense, yeah. 
So if you put the damping to zero, the animation is going to go for infinite. But with damping, you can decide how fast you want the spring to stop. Um, which I thought uh, was really interesting. And maybe, um, like, if you want to put some kind of spinner or something, maybe you can experiment with with uh, setting the damping to zero and uh, get, like, a an infinite animation. Just as an idea. Um, that gave me, like, a... a uh, a good idea, like which parameter I can tweak at what time to to uh, to do it. Um, the units of it are also really uh, interesting. Like you said, maths is like just a uh, normalized one at uh, uh, um, by default, and uh, velocity is like measured in uh, pixels per second or points per second or points per second. Um, so that's also interesting that it's going to like um uh maybe it has an effect on what your screen size is or like how the big how big the element is um on the velocity um so if you like scale the animation up and you see that it's going to behave differently then that's uh a thing to consider really um tricky to work with and um now we come now we uh, come to a few more parameters that you can specify in addition to these basic physical properties so, so there's like overshoot clamping i think this is quite obvious right yes and it's um so you don't want so if you go you spring to a value of 1 you don't want the spring to go above 1 right Exactly, and this one makes sense. For instance, in the case where you have uh, you animate on the height, and maybe if the height is positive, you want like to have a nice bouncing effect. But if you go from let's say one hundred to zero, and you animate on height, you don't want negative values in your spring because what does it mean to have a height of minus ten? Absolutely. Um, yeah, sometimes it's just uh, so yeah. So overshoot clamping just prevents. Um, spring animation from going to overshoot the target kind of and uh, it, it always overshoots the the target um how much depends kind of on the on the stiffness that you put but uh it is useful in uh, in a lot of uh, circumstances when when you want to reduce that uh bouncing a bit but still like want your animation to go with uh with force now there's a um Tricky one coming up. The, the last two parameters, they are called rest speed threshold and rest displacement threshold. <laughs> do you know what they do and uh, what's the difference between them? I know what they do and I use them, but I have no idea okay. about the difference between the two. I mean, both of them are used to check if the spring animation is over or not. And... There is a quite uh, well-known example, which is a Tinder swipe. So you move a card around. If the, you release the card to go back to the stack, you want a nice bouncing effect and it looks very nice and it's very smooth. So this animation is going to take a while to finish because then you have this small oscillation in, in the movement of the card. If you swipe to the left to the right here, you really want a spring effect because you want also the speed of the animation to depend on the velocity of the gesture. But once the card is outside the um, screen, you want to finish the animation as fast as possible because you want to apply a side effect. So you don't want the card to oscillate and the user cannot see it. And then we're still waiting for the animation to be over. Maybe the user thinks there is a bug because why the side effect didn't happen yet. And he doesn't even see that the animation is not finished. And rest displacement threshold can help with that because then you can specify an amount of, of points for which you can consider the animation to be done. And that's why we would use in the Tinder example where if you swipe to the left or to the right, you want a very strong uh, rest displacement threshold so that as soon as the card uh, is outside the screen, boom, animation is over. Very nice. That's exactly what it does, and it's also like a good example for for uh, when you can use it. So, um, like like mentioned before, like 
if you would not put any damping, the spring animation would like loop infinitely. But if you put damping, the animation is theoretically still never quite done. Um, there's always like some small energy into it, but you have to like decide, okay, when does it, um, when should we consider the animation uh, done? If it just like barely moves, um, then we should probably call it done. And this is what these parameters decide. Very useful, for example, um, uh, de uh, deciding, okay, now that one card has been swiped away that we should like animate um, the next card. So increasing that threshold will um, make it a bit snappier. What we haven't discussed yet is the the difference between these two uh, parameters and rest speed threshold decides um, when the animation is done based on the speed of uh, or like the velocity. So one is on position, one is on velocity. Exactly. So displacement is on position, rest speed threshold is on velocity. And I think the animation is done when both criteria are fulfilled or one criteria is fulfilled. So as you are saying this, I'm like, damn, I need to update some of my uh, spring configurations. <laughs> I also don't know. Um, I, I think too few, too few people uh, know this. So maybe this helps at least a little bit, even though we are all... That not... helps me a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, a game that... changer. Wow. Um, and this is just like something um, that... Let's be honest, we don't need to worry about so much uh, over time. It's just useful that um, you know which parameter to tweak um, to get to your result faster. Mm -hmm.